Hello, New Hope. Welcome to today's devotional. And I've chosen a passage of scripture from the Hebrew Bible. We call it the Old Testament. In Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26, and it says something like this. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So today I want to talk to you just a little bit about that. Now many Christians and, and others, non-believers even, have the idea that the Old Testament God, the Old Testament Jehovah, is harsh, he's unloving, he's judgmental, uh, oft times he's aloof, and I can tell you that none of that is true about God. That's all, that's all false. Uh, the God of the Old Testament is the same God that you and I know today in the New Testament. So he is a loving father who wants the very best for his children. An example from the book of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 29, 11, we read, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And there are countless other examples as well throughout the Hebrew Scriptures. Now, we tend to not think as New Testament people, uh, we tend not to think very much of our Jewish roots, the Jewish roots to our faith. But Paul, in writing to the Romans, uh, indicated that we are grafted in to the root, to the trunk, which was ancient Israel. And so the Old Testament scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, many of them apply to you and I uh, just as they applied to ancient Israel. And a portion of that scripture is in Numbers chapter 6, the Aaronic blessing. We typically don't think of it as applying to us, but it, you know, it applies just as much as the shepherd psalm, Psalm 23, and uh, much of the Old Testament, almost all of it. So let's, uh, today I just want to do a little quick word study and consider oh, four or five words and just think briefly about each. And uh, maybe it'll help us to understand what God really wants for us as his believer, as, as uh, believers in Jesus, Yeshua, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, and the Savior of the entire world. So the first word let's look at is uh, the word bless. And three times God says, Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So blessing is a huge part of this. And the idea in the Hebrew is to present a gift to another and in presenting that gift you bow out of respect so the idea here is believe it or not of the Lord coming to us and bowing out of respect and offering gifts to us well how can that be you ask well I'm glad you asked that question here's how God does it have you ever approached a child or a grandchild got down on your knees and looked at them eye to eye. We have a three and a half year old granddaughter who was with us over the weekend. And I love getting down on her level and looking at her eye to eye and talking to her face to face. That's the idea here. God wants to, out of respect for you and out of respect for me, he wants to present us a gift. Why? Because he's a loving father. So the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Now there's a couple of words in the Hebrew here that uh, we translate normally into our English to keep. And the idea of the word keep here is uh, denotes guarding or protecting. So again, in Psalm 23, 
the psalm that we consider the shepherd psalm, uh, it talks about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and you know how it goes. The, I the idea here in number six, however, is of a shepherd who's not in his normal area. He's taken his sheep to a field far away, and the day is now far spent, and the night is approaching, and danger approaches in the darkness and at night. And so the shepherd builds a temporary uh, hedge of protection and then takes his sheep into that, into that enclosure. And the idea, again, is of a hedge that is built for protection made out of thorny bushes. In fact, the Hebrew word that translates thorn comes from the same Hebrew root word that means to guard or to protect. So the idea of a thorny brush hedge of protection around the sheep is what's being conveyed here. So the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Next, the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. And so here, uh, it, the idea is light shining upon God's people. And to make his face to shine upon God's people. You know, your face shows what you're thinking on the inside. We can read people's face and we can know whether they're disappointed or whether they're happy or exuberant or joyful or sad or uh, you name the emotion that's going on on the inside. We can see it in the face of the individual. So the idea here is of God making his face, his joyful, loving face, to cast his light, his love, his approval upon us. I think of my son-in-law and our uh, granddaughter. I watched him go down the hall one time, and she had just woke from a nap. She was maybe a year old standing up in her crib as kids do and as he got to her room the expression on his face went from his normal expression we had been talking to he just lit up with anticipation and the joy of seeing our granddaughter his daughter and he wanted and this is what he told Rhonda and I afterwards he wanted to always present himself in a manner to his kids, that he loved them, that he wanted to be with them. And it showed in his face. And so they saw the face of a loving father, a caring father, a guarding father. And the Lord wants to do that same thing. Make his face to shine upon you as a loving father who cares for you. And of course, the light brings order out of chaos. It reveals what had been in the dark before, but now it's in the light, and God is the God of light. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace. God wants to give us grace. Now the, the Hebrew here that's translated grace or gracious um, be gracious unto you in, in verse uh, 25 is not the normal grace like we think about in the New Testament where grace is unmerited favor, where God just gives us his grace. This graciousness, again, goes along with other Hebrew words and they're used in parable, uh, parallel most of the time with other words that denote healing or help or uh, to find refuge or to be rescued. So again, the idea is God rescuing his people, caring for his people and watching out for his people. And grant or give, grant's probably a better word, peace. To put the word here to give or to grant means to put in a fixed arranged location to establish, or to fix, or to appoint. So God has appointed these things for 
you and for I, and to give us, to grant us peace. And this peace in the Hebrew is not the absence of war or conflict. This peace is, denotes restitution or restoration. It denotes having something taken from us and then it, that item being restored. So God wants to, to give peace, wholeness to us. You know, the oldest biblical text that's ever been found was found in Jerusalem uh, a, a number of years ago by Gabby Barclay, who's a, a friend of Dr. Nunley's. And what it was was, was a little silver um, necklace type thing. And it contained the very text we're talking about today. And so I want to end today's um, time together with this thought. Think about it now in new terms. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord um, make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. That's my prayer for you today. That's our prayer for you today. I pray for wholeness and health and peace. And amidst all the things that's going on in our lives today, I pray that God brings order to our lives and hope. God bless you. We'll see you next time.